Basically, um, my name is Carlos. I'm a university professor in Colombia, South America. And I will be presenting uh, an application to issue academic certificates on Hyperledger Fabric. So I work both for the university, but I, I'm also working on this project that involves a lot of people in uh, both Europe and in America, which is called Blockchain for Open Sciences. And this is actually uh, trying to look at blockchain applications in academia. So this is actually a side project. Our main project is concerned about um, using blockchain technology to being able to track different types of co co academic contributions that go beyond a paper. So, so first, uh, so basically, um, certificates are of a social convention that we use to be able to uh, convey information about different accomplishments. And uh, the current system of managing certificates, both at universities, which is the user case that I will be talking about, is a bit cumbersome. It's still very fragmented, and sometimes it has low security. So there are some ad important advantages of having uh, digital solutions. So there are already uh, a few companies uh, since a few years ago uh, that already provide digital solutions for uh, school diplo diplomas, transcripts, official documents, uh, like professional certifications. And there are also some standards, like there is the open badges standard. Um, but what does blockchain bring to the, the sort of, um, what is the innovation when you introduce blockchains? So uh, first of all, there are already a couple of uh, uh, proofs of concepts and uh, things that have been already developed and even deployed in, in solutions for use, issuing digital certificates using blockchain technology. We're actually extending a project which is called BlockCerts, which is a project that was created in MIT Media Lab uh, around 2016, which uh, decided to define a standard, to extend the standard like open badges to be able to uh, create um, blockchain issued certificate using kind of the Ethereum and the Bitcoin, and the Bitcoin blockchain. So what we do is we kind of apply these ideas to uh, Hyperledger. So um, we introduce the, the di important difference between what uh, the blocks, we use the blocks as a standard to uh, issue and create the certificates. But uh, the important difference is that we do not require a cryptocurrency to be able to issue these certificates, which was the original idea based on this block search standard. And also, what uh, being able to provide a permission solution um, works quite well with universities because sometimes they want to, uh, they really don't want to de design, um, they, they don't want to think about redesigning in a very strong manner what they're already doing. So they have to transition, make some sort of phase transition, and would like to be able to have some flexibility. Uh, and, and having this flexibility, they need to have um, like solutions that are not off the shelf. So uh, in terms of the um, business network uh, that we develop is basically, it's a very simple business network. Like you have uh, two asset registries, one asset registry based on uh, a template. So this is the template that is defined uh, by the people in the administrative office or the, uh, or the registry of the university. And then you have the personalized certificates, which just, which just carries the information of the person who has received the certificate. And you basically also have like two user stories, one user story, which is administrative staff within the university and also external, uh, consult, external uh, participants, which just want to verify the uh, issued certificate. So one of the bad added values of having blockchain technology in particular in, is in terms, of uh, it's in terms of security. So the original proposal of block certs propo has uh, four like layers of security. So the first layer is uh, the certificate integrity. And this means that the data has not been tampered. So nobody has really so issue the certificate that they do, do that the issuer does not um, guarantee, 
and we use this uh, and we, we use this um, to guarantee the certificate integrity. We, do, we use this cryptographic signature. The other uh, verification step is kind of to uh, have a, a, an authentic issuer. That means that the institution, uh, in this case the university, is the real authority uh, that has issued this type of certificate. This, this is a bit different um, of our proposal versus the original proposal based on block search because block search requires kind of that issuer authenticity is checked externally. Well, since we have uh, like um, the administrative spot, the administrative staff at the university or institution are part of the participant registry within the Hyperledger framework or in Fabric, uh, then you can have kind of an internal issuer uh, verification. And the last step, uh, you have also additionally a, a, you want to check the blockchain integrity. This is a third step. And there is a fourth step, but we don't need really this fourth step because since we're working with a permission blockchain, we don't need to check the receipt of the transaction as you would in the original proposal of block search, which is based again on uh, Ethereum or, or the blockchain, Bitcoin blockchain. So uh, we developed a case, which is for the university that I work for, uh, which is a private university in Bogota, Colombia. And it uh, has around more than uh, 7,000 students. And we developed kind of a user case based on a series of certificates, like around 20 types of certificates that uh, just, uh, actually they're not exactly diplomas. There are certificates that tell that a person is involved in a particular program or that they, they have some um, language requirements. But the university was more was interested that we start on this issue because it, these are the certificates that are more prone to be uh, falsified, right? So we developed, we built an application to create the certificate templates, issue the certificates, and provide the validation layers. And we've done uh, some testing to be able to deploy this sort of infrastructure into uh, to be able to work within the university, both at the administrative level, but also at the faculties and the schools. And the extension to this project is to eventually develop a digital diplomas and badges to and to integrate it to the current infrastructure of the university and some other universities, and then provide a standard and host a service and obviously this standard has to be validated by the Ministry of Education. So this is just a quick uh, video of basically what we've de developed. And uh, first you have like this user story of the administrative staff from the university. So he has to log in to the system and then he's able to create the first step, which is the certificate template. So the certificate template is like the generic template that just uh, explains what type of certificate uh, will the administrative staff design. So here we're just uh, making a certificate based on that a per particular person is participating in one program. Um, so this, the administrative staff just has to define like the ID of the type of uh, certificate template and then just fill out the information uh, that will be later personalized uh, for every, for the, the student that will receive the certificate. Then we, he has to also include the information of the issuer. So the information of the issuer is obviously the information of the university uh, or the school that will be issuing this certificate. And we will also include uh, the, the, the links to the images, like for example, the school logo or the signature of the person who's signing the certificate, right? So um, then, once we issued, uh, once we've created the template, we go into another phase, which is issuing the certificate. So this is done like we're pulling out a, an Excel file or a spreadsheet, um, and there were, then we choose the particular type of template, and then we issue, we call onto this Excel file, which has the student information, and this is eventually the process how we issue the certificates. So here we're issuing the certificates, and we're able to look at the issued certificates using uh, the composer. And so these issued certificates are um, basically in the asset registry. And last user story is based on some external, like a student 
or a employer that wants to verify a certificate. So he goes online and he just puts the number of the certificate and then gets the verification steps done. And then at the end, he's finally able to download the, the certificate. So, and at this process, when you're downloading the certificate, you're actually creating the visual, the visualization of the certificate that just joins the information from both the template and the personalized certificate. So this is uh, the, the end process, and this is what people uh, eventually get when they download the certificate. So um, this is actually what we're doing. What we're doing when we're creating the certificates is with, we're just joining kind of the two asset registries. First, the asset registry that has to do with the, the template, and uh, then the, also the asset registry that has to do with the personalized certificate. That means the information from the student uh, who obtained this certificate. And in addition, we have also the information of where is the image folder, and this is in the JSON template. We're currently working to include an additional a QR code to be able to uh, be able to include the information of the student and the template so that the verification process can be done more automatically and you don't really have to include a specific number of certificates. So this is actually the first step. And the second step that we are currently working on is, is basically working on, the, on digital diplomas. Digital diplomas are a bit more complicated because they, uh, they involve many uh, different um, areas within the university more than the, the, this case that we were looking at. So the interesting here is that deployment and signing sort of the, the approval messages across different institutions within the university is, is a, it adds another layer uh, where uh, implementing Fabric, it's interesting. Because currently what you have is that um, you sort of have a series of steps and we can associate these steps to the state of the, of the certificate and the state has to change while it passes to different um, uh, different steps through the, the graduation process within the university. So first you go through the central registry, the central registry has to retrieve the information from the student, they also create the templates, then they, they join together and they create the certificate, but then this goes into a, a, a step that is, uh, has to be approved uh, then once it's approved, it goes to another office in the university in charge of graduation, and it also has to be approved that uh, the, the, the students that will be participating in the graduation, they are all getting their certificates. And then once this is done, then the certificates goes into the printing office and so on. So there's a lot of states, and so this is the, basically the, where you want to sort of decentralize this process. Um, so this is just a figure just, just indicating how, how currently the system works, and uh, we're, we're currently working how to do this using uh, the distributed ledger. So, um, so again, the idea is to have a sort of a, a way to have these uh, processing facilities for the, the diplomas, the badges, anything that, any type of document that the university wants to uh, built as a digital document with all the security that you made one to include and also in a decentralized manner. So uh, where we're looking at is having sort of these intermediate validation steps between across the different offices within the university that to be able to approve uh, the different states of the, of the diploma or the certificate. And as I mentioned before, we're also currently working on a way to use to include the information, the personal information in the QR, Q, QR code, so you can have like an easier way to validate in the validation process. So um, just to close up, this basically, these ideas of digital diplomas. So we see in higher education that higher education is going to change radically in the coming years. And one of the most important things that will change is that you will probably uh, have a lifetime lifelong education experience, and there will be certain uh, different institutions involved. So you will have traditional universities, you also have independent scholars, or also professional experience. 
And so these are sort of the decentralized system of acquiring skills where we think that this sort of blockchain technology uh, makes, uh, makes sense. So this, this proof of concept is kind of a first step within one university, and we're trying to make this uh, kind of uh, uh, build this up into something that we can work across universities as, and also integrate uh, the Ministry of Education and to be able to build a decentralized and interconnected system to be able to validate the process of acquiring new skills. So um, again, as I mentioned before, this is, a, this is a joint work with a lot of people, some people in, in Latin America, some people in, the, in Europe, and some people in the US. And if you have some time uh, and want to check uh, our main project and the side project, uh, you can go to our webpage, which is called Blockchain for Open Sciences. So thank you very much.